San Jose, California. It's the Q covering Big Data Silicon Valley 2017. Hey, welcome back everyone. Live in Silicon Valley for Big Data SV. This is theCUBE coverage in conjunction with Strata Hadoop. I'm John Furrier with George Gilbert, analyst at Wikibon, two great guests. We have Stephanie McReynolds, Vice President of Startup Elation, and Lee Paris, who's the VP of Think Big Analytics. Thanks for coming back. Both been on theCUBE, you haven't been on theCUBE before, but Think Big has been on many times. Great to see you. What's, what's new, what are you guys up to? Yeah, excited to, to be here and to be here with Lee. Lee and I have a personal relationship that goes back quite a ways in the industry. Um, and then what we're talking about today is the integration between Kylo, which was recently announced as an open source project from Think Big, and Alation's capability to sit on top of Kylo um, and together to increase the velocity of uh, data lake initiatives, mm -hmm. um, kind of going from zero to 60 in a pretty short amount of uh, time to get both technical value from Kylo and business value from Alation. So talk about Alation's attraction, because you guys had a, a, has been an interesting startup, got a lot of great press, George is a big fan, he's going to jump in with some questions, but lots of some good product fit with the market. What's the update? What's some of the status on the traction in terms of the company and customers and whatnot? Yeah, we've been growing pretty rapidly for a startup. We've doubled our production customer count from last time we talked. Um, some great brand names. Um, Munich Reinsurance uh, this morning uh, was talking about their implementation. So they have uh, 600 users of Alation in their organization. We've entered Europe, um, not only with Munich Reinsurance, but Tesco is a large account of ours in, in Europe now. Um, and here in the States, we've seen broad adoption across a, a wide range of industries, everyone from Pfizer in the healthcare space to um, eBay, who's been our longest standing customer. They have about 1,000 weekly users on, on Alation. So um, not only great, um, you know, kind of a great increase in number of, of logos, but also organic growth internally at many of these companies across data scientists, um, data analysts, business analysts, a wide range of, of users of the product as well. It's been interesting, and what I like about your approach is, and, and we've talked about Think Big about it before, we let every guest coming on so far that's been in the same area is talking about metadata layers. And so, this is interesting. There's a metadata, data addressability, if you will, for lack of a better description, but yet human usable, and has to be, integrating into human processes, whether it's visualization, or any kind of real-time uh, app or anything. So you're seeing this, this convergence between, I need to get the data into an app, and whether it's IoT data or something else, really, really fast. So the really kind of the discovery piece is now the interesting layer. How's the competitive is it? I mean, and, and who's got, what's the different solutions that you guys see in this market? Yeah, I think it's interesting because metadata has kind of had a revival, right? Everyone's talking about the importance of metadata and open integration with metadata. Um, I think really um, our angle as, as Alation is that having open transfer of technical metadata is very important for the foundation of analytics. Um, but what really brings that technical metadata to life is also understanding what is the business context of what's happening technically in the system, what's the business context of data, what's the behavioral context of how that data has been used that might inform me as an, an analyst. And what's your unique person. approach to that? Because that's that's like the holy grail. I mean, it's like translating geek metadata, indexing <laughs> right. stuff into like usable. <laughs> yeah. Business I mean, outcomes has been know, a cliche for the, years. The, the approach you know? is really based on machine learning and AI technology to make recommendations to business users about what might be interesting to them. So we're at a state in the market where there's so much data that is available and that you can access um, either in Hadoop as a data lake or in a, a data warehouse in a, a database like Teradata um, that today what you need as state of the art is the system to start to recommend to you what might be interesting data for you to use mm -hmm. as a data scientist or an analyst. And not just what's the data you could use, but how accurate is that data, how trustworthy is it? Um, I think there's a whole nother theme of, of governance that's rising, that's mm -hmm. tied to that metadata discussion, which is it's not enough to just shove bits and bytes between different systems anymore. You really need to understand how's this data been manipulated and, and used, and how does that influence my security considerations, my privacy considerations, the value I'm going to be able to get out of that data set. Lee, what's your, what's your take on this? Because you guys have a relationship. How's Think Big doing? Then talk about the, the partnership you guys have with Alation. 
Sure. So, I mean, when you look at what we've done, and specifically to an open source project, it's the first one that Terry is fully sponsored and released based on Apache 2.0 called Kylo. Mm -hmm. It's really about the enablement of the, the full data lake platform and the full framework everywhere from ingest to securing it to governing it, which part of that is collecting as part of that process, the basic technical and business metadata so later, you can hand it over to the users so they could sample, they could profile the data, they could find, they can search it in a Google-like manner, and then you can enable the organization with that data. So when you look at it from a standpoint of partnering together, it's really about collecting that data specifically within Hadoop to enable it, yet with the ability then to hand it off to more the enterprise-wide solution like Alation through mm -hmm. API connections to connect to that, and then for them to enrich it in the way that they go about it with the social collaboration and the business yeah. to extend it from there. So that's an accelerant then, so you're accelerating the open source project in through this new, with, with Alation, so you're still going to rock and roll with the open source very, very much going to rock and roll with the open source. Okay. So it's really been based on five years of Think Big's work in the marketplace over about 150 data lakes. The, the IP we built around that to do things repeatedly, consistently, and then releasing that in the last two years, dedicated development based on Apache Spark and iFi to yeah. extend that out. Uh, great work, by the way. For open source has continued to be more relevant. I, but I got to get your perspective on a, uh, a meme that's been floating around day one here, and maybe it's because of the election. But someone said uh, we got to drain the data swamp um, <laughs> <laughs> and make data great again. I mean, I'm not a play on Trump, but I mean that. But the data lake is going through a transition and saying, okay, we got data lakes, but now this year has been a focus on making that much more active and cleaner or you know, making sure it doesn't become you know, a swamp, if you will. So there's been a, a focus of taking data lake content and getting it into real time. And IOT's kind of, I think, been a forcing function. But you guys, do you guys have a perspective on that, on what you're, where, the, where data lakes are going? Certainly it's been trending conversation here at the show. Yeah, I mean, I think IOT has been part of, you know, drain that data swamp, right? But I think also now you have a mass of business analysts that are starting to get access to that data in the lake. These Hadoop implementations are maturing to the stage where you so have- So value coming out of it. Yeah, and, 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 and people are trying to, to wring value out of that lake and yeah. sometimes finding that it's harder than they expected because the data hasn't been pre-prepared for them. This old world of um, IT would pre-prepare the data and then I got a single metric or I got a couple metrics to choose from is now turned on its head. People are taking a more exploratory, discovery-oriented discovery approach to navigating through their data and finding that the nuances of data really matter when trying to evolve in, in insight. And so the, the literacy in these organizations and their awareness of some of the challenges of a lake are coming to the forefront. And I think that's a healthy conversation mm -hmm. for us all to have. If you're going to have a data-driven organization, you have to really understand the nuances of your, your data to know where to apply it appropriately. Uh, to decision making. So, um, Ray Azzi, actually going back quite a few years, when he was starting at Microsoft, said internet software has changed paradigm somewhat in that we had this new sort of uh, set of actions where it was discover, learn, try, buy, recommend. And it sounds like as a consumer of data in a data lake, we've added or, or pretended this step, this discovery step. Um, where in a, in a well curated data warehouse, you know, it was learn. You had your X dimensions that were, you know, curated and refined and you don't have that as much with the data lake. Um, and I guess I'm wondering, it's almost like if you're going to take, as we were talking to the, um, the last team with, uh, at scale and moving OLAP, you know, to be something you'd, something you'd consume on a, on a data lake the way you consume on a data warehouse, it's almost like um, elation and a and a you know a smart catalog is as much a, a requirement as a visualization tool is by itself on a on a data warehouse. Yeah, I think what we're we're seeing is this notion of data needing to be curated and in including many brains and many different perspectives in that curation process. Yeah. Um, is something that's defining the future of, of analytics and how people use technical metadata. And what does it mean for the DevOps organization to get involved in draining that swamp? That means not only looking at the, um, the elements of the data that are, that are coming in from a technical perspective, but then collaborating with the business to curate the value on top of that data. So in other words, it's, it's not just to help the user, the, the business analyst, navigate, but it's also to help the operational folks do a better job of curating once they find out 
who's using it, who's using the data, and how. That's, that's right. They, they kind of need to know how this data is going to be used in the organization. The, the volumes are so high that they couldn't possibly curate every bit and byte that is stored in the data lake. And so by looking at how um, different individuals in the organization and different groups are trying to access that data, that gives early signal to where should we be spending more time or less time uh, in uh, processing this data and helping the organization really get to their, their end goals of usage. So Lee, oh. okay. Lee, I want to ask you a question on your blog post. I just was, was uh, pointed out earlier. You guys um, quote a Gartner stat, which, which says, which is pretty doom and gloom, which said 70% uh, of Hadoop deployments in 27 will either fail or deliver their estimated cost savings of their predictive revenue. And then it says, that's a dim view, but not shared by the Kylo community. Um, how are you guys going to make uh, the Kylo um, data lake software work well. What's your thoughts on that? Because I think people are, that's the number one, again, question that I highlighted right. earlier is, okay, I don't want a swamp. So that's fear, whether they, they get one or not. So they worry about data cleansing and all these things. So what's Kylo doing that's going to accelerate or lower that number of fails in the data lake world? <laughs> Yeah, sure, so I mean, again, a lot of it's through experience of going out there and seeing what's done. A lot of people have been doing a lot of the different things within the data lake, but you know, when you go in there, there's certain things they're not doing, and then when you're doing them, it's about doing them over consistently and, and can continually improving upon that. And that's what Kylo is, it's really a framework that we keep adding to it as the community grows and other projects come in there, can enhance it, um, we bring the value. But a lot of times when we go in, it's basically, end users can't get to the data either one, because they're not allowed to, because maybe it's not secured and, and rely to turn it over to them and, and let them drive with it, mm -hmm. or they don't know the data's there, which goes back to the basic collecting, the basic metadata and data about the data to know it's there to leverage it. So a lot of times it's going back mm -hmm. and looking at and leveraging what we have to build that solid foundation so IT and operations can feel like they can hand that over in a template format so business users could get to the data and start acting off of that. I just lost yeah. your bike there, I but Stephanie, bike, but I got I got to ask you a question. So, just on a point of uh, clarification, so you guys are you are you supporting Kylo? Is that the the relationship, or how does that work? So, so we we we're integrated with with Kylo. Okay, so Kylo it. will ingest data into the lake, um, manage that data lake from a security perspective, giving folks permissions. Um, enable some wrangling on that data. And what Alation is receiving them from Kylo is that technical metadata that's being created along that entire path. So you're certified with Kylo. So this is, I mean, how does that all work for a customer standpoint? Yeah, it's a very much an integration partnership that, that okay. we'd be working together. All right, so from a customer standpoint, it's clean, and you then provide the benefits on the other side, correct? Yeah, absolutely, and okay. we've been working with uh, data lake implementations for, for some time, since our, since our founding, really. Um, and I think this is an extension of um, our philosophy that the data lakes are going to play an important role that are going to complement databases and analytics tools, business intelligence tools in the analytics environment. And the open source is part of the future of, of how folks are, are building these environments. So we're excited to support um, the Kylo initiative. We've had a longstanding relationship with, um, with Teradata uh, as a partner. Awesome. And so it's a great way well, thank, to thank thanks for coming on the cube really appreciate it and thank and what do you think of the show you guys so far what's the what's the current uh, vibe of the show no it's been good so far i mean it's one day into it but uh, very good vibe so far different different topics and different things about AI machine this, learning could yeah, be could be you could be more happy with that <laughs> machine to, learning great trend great see machine learning <laughs> taking a forefront yeah. people really digging into yeah. the the details around what it means how to right. apply it it's definitely Lee. thanks for coming on the cube really appreciate it. more cube coverage after the short break live from silicon valley i'm john Furrier with george gilbert We'll be right back after this short break.